<laughs> Whoa! Hey, hey there guys, it's me. User slash meme lord Thornbush, aka Thornbushy, aka Thornbush, the number one Highlander and Lawbringer extraordinaire. And I'm back at it again with another video. And today it's a very special video that I've been trying to put together for a while, but just with university bogging me down, I haven't gotten the chance to until now, and that is this Tiandi guide. I've fallen in love with the character pretty much as soon as he was announced, and I played the hell out of him in the NDA test and the week or so that I've had access to Marching Fire. I've got him up to rep 5 so far, and I've done a couple 1 scrims, but I'm pretty much at the point that I'm ready to make this guide, and I'm comfortable with the information that I'm going to be putting out here. So, comment down below if this is a kind of content that everyone would be interested in. I'd be more than happy to make a Dominion extension to this guide, or maybe guides on Lawbringer and Conqueror. Uh, I've had a blast making it. It did take quite a while, but if it is appreciated and people do want to see more, I would have no problem with continuing to make this type of content, or maybe even branching out to new stuff. But without further ado, let's get into this Tiandi guide. Alright, so for pun max punishes, uh, Freeze just recently made a video on what all the max punishes on Tiandi are, so we're just going to quickly go through it to cover it here as well. Uh, right now, for Heavy Parry Punish, you're going to want to do an Unlock Light into Guaranteed Top Follow-Up Light. Uh, this is just a glitch where the first flight has enough hits done to guarantee the second follow-up. This will probably be patched at some point in the future, but it's good to keep in mind for now. Without the Unlock Light bug, the max punish off of Heavy Parry is a Zone Attack, which deals 20 damage and it can lead into your Kick Mix-Up afterward. Assuming the unlock light bug uh, doesn't exist, my usual punish off of heavy parry is just light for 15 damage and much less stamina cost than the zone because it leads into the chained light afterwards for more damage. If the enemy is low on stamina, you can use a palm strike to send them out of stamina, which confirms 14 damage and leads into your out of stamina pressure. Off of guard break, you get a confirmed side heavy for 30 damage, which leads into your chained light or kick mix up. If you do land a kick, if there's no wall behind them, it naturally confirms nothing. However, the forward heavy cannot be parried, so you get a safe 4 chip damage and lead into your chain lights afterwards. If there's a wall a short distance away, you can get a forward dodge light confirmed, uh, which can also lead into your chain lights or a palm strike. It's not often that you'll find a wall right behind the enemy when you do a kick, but if you do, uh, you get a top heavy confirmed, or just whichever heavy that you're already in that guard stance for. It is unsafe, however you can follow up with a chained light, a palm strike, or a chained heavy since it only has 100 milliseconds of guard break vulnerability. All of these can stuff a guard break on attempt to punish you. I'll try, I'll Kick, try, yeah, more yeah, often than not, will just slide the enemy out of your range. Uh, so never really rely on try, getting try, that yeah, heavy, try, say, for a killing blow, because often it's just going to be inconsistent. On a successful crushing counter strike, you get 22 damage, oh, plus a for confirmed follow-up palm strike for another 14 damage. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this move has 200 milliseconds startup, because I can't use it on reaction to 500 millisecond lights, but I had no issue with 600 millisecond lights. So most of the time you're going to be use the, using this to punish heavy attack. Pretty much all of your out of stamina punishes are just going to be light into heavy. Uh, right light I found is most consistent, uh, just make sure it's buffered. The only exception to this rule is if you get an out of stamina parry with a wall behind them, in which case you can get a side heavy into any heavy finisher. Off of light parry, you get a top heavy for 35 damage, which leads into your kick or chain light mix up. There's a lot to talk about with palm strike, and the first thing I want to talk about it is how punishable it is. Uh, so, as we know, we can chain after whiff to prevent guard break punishes, and you can either do that with a light or with a heavy. And as a general rule of thumb, you almost always want to follow up with a heavy if you whiff. This is because you can easily, on reaction to your palm strike whiffing, use your heavy and it will still stuff a guard break just like your light would, on top of having hyper armor to trade with a dodge attack if they go for that, uh, it deals more damage at 20, oh, okay, okay. and if you get parried, it's only a heavy parry punish instead of a light. As well as you can catch some people that were looking for a light parry instead. 
After a Palm Strike, you can of course get your Confirmed Light for 14 damage, but if you do a Heavy, it is unparryable just like with After Kick, so you can get a safe 4 chip damage and lead into your Chain Lights. Basically all of the time, you're just going to want to go with the Chain Light uh, for the Confirmed 14 damage, and since it has a very lenient input window, there shouldn't be many, in many instances where you accidentally do the Heavy Dodge attack, but something important to keep in mind. What? If you use the Palm Strike out of range, you can use the Hyper Armor on the Heavy afterwards to trade with any punish attempt from the enemy. One thing to keep in mind about Palm Strike is it's still only 600 milliseconds, which means it's a reactable bash for the vast majority of players. Because of this, you're only going to want to sprinkle it into your offense to provide consistent pressure without being something that the enemy is always looking out for. I find that the best way to mix up with Palm Strikes are after feints. So after a neutral or chained heavy, or even with some of my dragon dodges, I will use them after feints, and I find that's especially efficient in catching the enemy off guard. Also good to mention that a feint into palm strike can punish parry attempts okay. against that heavy, and in the case of the chained heavy, the light and the okay. chained heavy are close enough in speed that you can punish both a light and okay. heavy parry attempt. Outside of after feints, the best way to use Palm Strike is in chain after any of your neutral or dodge lights. This is because both of these moves chain directly into your 400 millisecond light finishers, which is some really threatening, unreactable pressure that the enemies probably can be focused on blocking. That way, you can split in a Palm Strike here and there to catch them off guard. It's also good to note that Palm Strike has a very, very lenient delay window when using Chain. So much so that if you delay it long enough, you'll just do a neutral Palm Strike, similar to how it works with Gladiator Toe Stab. You can delay it so long that if the enemy tries to dodge out of your finisher mix-up to avoid the Chain Light, you can actually delay Palm Strike long enough to punish that side dodge on reaction. It's also good to note that it can punish parry attempts as well if they try to go for a prediction parry attempt on your chained light. Next up, let's talk about Tiandi Zone, which is very, very good. Uh, it's 500 milliseconds, which is some good neutral pressure, just as how it is with Kensei or Warden or Shaman or whoever, uh, and it's especially good because you have that 600 millisecond palm strike from neutral. So if you compare it to say Gladiator, who has a 600 millisecond zone from neutral and then also has the neutral pressure of his lights, Tiandi has that same pressure from palm strike, but at a bit better neutral pressure because of that threat of that zone. When used defensively, you can also soft faint the second portion of the zone into a kick mix-up. Now, before doing so, you really need to keep in mind that this eats hella stamina, so if you soft faint it into a dodge light, that's pretty much going to be your whole stamina bar. You're not going to be able to really do any mix-ups after that. Uh, also, it's pretty situational because, of course, there's not always going to be a wall behind the enemy to give actual reward from your kick. But the important thing to note about this is the second portion of the zone can be fainted into a palm strike. So you can mix up the enemy between those two different unblockable indicators. Of course, there is that faint animation in between that makes it not a very smooth mix-up, but if they're focused on that blockable indicator, you can definitely catch somebody off guard with this. The last thing to mention about Tandy Zone is that against an unlocked opponent, if you land the first swing of your zone, the second swing is also confirmed. So that's 45 damage total between the 20 damage first swing and 25 damage second swing. Yeah. Now the reason this is important is that in duel, even oh, okay. though the enemy isn't going to be unlocked that much, except for maybe if they're trying to unlock Sprint New, oh, which you okay. can punish, really uh, if they go for a roll, because it has such immense forward oh, okay. momentum That's on really it, good. you can track a roll on reaction to get that 45 damage punish, which is really big compared to what oh, other yeah, characters have to okay. reaction punish rolls, such as PK's forward heavy for 26 damage. Oh my god, that's sick. Oh, okay, Since okay. we were just talking about the kick soft feint of the second portion of the zone attack, we're just going to talk about it a little bit more here. Uh, for the most part, you don't really want to use kick in 1v1 because it naturally doesn't confirm anything and without a wall, and the chip damage oh, okay. from your forward heavy into your chain light finisher just isn't a strong enough reward to be using a bash that's punishable by dodge attacks. But if you do use it, I would recommend using the undodgeable light softening. When you do use that, you want to do it from top against superior oh, okay, block okay. characters. Uh, so that would be your conk, your 
Kensei, your Valkyrie, even Tiandi, since his guard is active in the direction he dodges. Uh, all of those characters are going to have to side dodge your kick to avoid it. So if you use the undodgeable light from the top, you're always going to get that confirmed. Against assassins, it doesn't really matter. And against regular static guard characters, you're just going to have to keep in mind where their guard was last if you want to do the softening. And if you predict somebody is going to go for a parry on your un undodgeable light, uh, you can do a forward dodge heavy to punish that parry attempt for 20 damage and to lead into your chain light finisher. So one really strong tool that Tiandi has access to is a backwards light. And the reason this is so strong is that it can punish aggression from the enemy player. Uh, how this happens is when you do your back light, uh, you get a bit of distance out from yourself to put yourself out of attacking distance from of the enemy. And then you have access to all of your finisher moves, such as your tri-directional 400 millisecond lights, which is good pressure on its own, uh, your palm strike, your heavy finisher, if you say you predict the enemy is going to go for an interrupt or maybe a guard break punish. And then on top of that, you have access to a dodge cancel. And the reason this is so strong is if they go for a punish against you, you can either avoid with the dodge cancel and punish, or you can do a back dodge after it, so you get some really good distance between you and the enemy from the backwards light, and then the back dodge as well. Of course with that, you do need to keep in mind that Tiani's back dodge is one of the worst in the game though. An important result from some of our testing is when both uh, player models were touching, and you did a back light as Tiandi, uh, oh, yeah. Only a maximum delayed light finisher would track that stationary enemy. A partial delay or a buffer uh, light will not track that stationary enemy. This shouldn't be as big of a deal in an actual game where the enemy oh, is yeah. really being aggressive and always pushing forward on you, but something important to keep in mind since if you do whiff, you're opening yourself up to a guard break punish. You can also do the same thing with your backwards heavy attack. Now. This has a bit less offensive applications because the backwards heavy puts you at a further distance than the backwards light, so much so that your delayed lights will never track a stationary enemy. You also do not have access to your kick mix-up. Kick can only be accessed after a blocked or hit heavy attack, not on whiff. So if you want to use your backwards heavy, you're pretty much only going to use it defensively combined with your back dodge to get the most distance from your enemy. Regarding Dragon Dodge, everyone's already made a video on how it has a lack of iframes, myself included, um, but I just will mention that you can avoid an initial attack with your Dragon Dodge, so against high recovery moves like for say uh, Highlander's Chained Heavy, which is one of the highest recovery moves in the game, you can use it on reaction to actually avoid that attack and then be able to punish it. But now, offensively speaking, the heavy dodge attack has basically no applications. The undodgeable light soft faint out of it is only 500 milliseconds, so it's either going to be blocked or parried consistently. And the only real way I would use it offensively is fainting it into palm strike, and even that is kind of just more open to interrupts than you would with a regular neutral heavy. Uh, defensively speaking, you're only going to really want to use it against bash base offense because, as everyone has already said, uh, regular attacks can knock you out of it, but it does hard counter bash base offense, like especially sh Warden Shoulder Bash, for example. Um, other than that, I will sometimes use Dragon Dodge out of range of the enemy to try to bait uh, some sort of punish attempt, and then I'll be able to use this multiple soft feints to try to punish that punish attempt. Uh, other than that, it doesn't have very much applications other than just negating bash base offense and uh, punishing certain high recovery moves. When you're chaining Dragon Dodges, you never want to use the soft feint, because with only three of them, you send yourself out of stamina. Instead, you want a hard feint into a, another Dragon Dodge, which you can now use 5 before going out of stamina, which is much more stamina efficient, as well as you have a little gap of dodge in between each Dragon Dodge, which you can use to avoid an interrupt attempt, and then be able to punish with, say, a Tiger Dodge. Tiger Dodge is really good defensively because it's the fastest dodge attack in the game. Uh, it doesn't have any iframes on the dodge attack itself, so you do need to delay it into your dodge, but so long that you do, you can avoid and punish pretty much anything, including Gladiator Zone. 
Offensively, it doesn't have as many applications because of its very distinct animation and the blue glow from the undodgeable property, which makes it for an easier parry or block than a usual 500 millisecond light. However, it can be used in certain matchups against, say, Berserker. If he whiffs an attack, you can use a dodge light on Prediction to catch his dodge cancel. Or against Nabushi, maybe, you can use it to counter Hidden Stance. Or against JJ, you can use it after he whiffs something and tries to go into Sifu Stance. Uh, all of these really have the same common theme of if the enemy has some sort of move where they can't block but they have a uh, dodge property on it, you can use those undodgeable lights to punish those. Other than that, if you're going to use them offensively, I always delay them into my dodge because they are 500 milliseconds and if you do delay them, it can be a bit of a tricky reaction because the enemy doesn't really expect it. Uh, if you mix between a delayed tiger dodge and a delayed dragon dodge, they come from opposite sides even though you dodge in the same direction. So that can be used to mix up the enemy as well, but overall it doesn't have that many offensive applications. It's mainly something used to punish bashes. The last thing I want to talk about is just the difference in tracking between his forge light and his forward heavy. Uh, just from quick testing, starting touching the enemy's model in two back dodges, you can see that the forward dodge light does not track that enemy, whereas the forward dodge heavy does. Uh, because of this, I do use the forward dodge heavy fairly often as something to feint into palm strike for, because I could kind of sit outside of the enemy's range, use the forward heavy to close that distance between myself and him, and then get into the fainted palm strike mix-up. Uh, of course, this isn't something you can use consistently because eventually they'll catch on to your feint and to palm strikes. But it is good to keep in mind that your forward heavy does have a bit more tracking for out of range neutral play. Alright, so to finish off this guide, I'm just going to do some narration over some duels I recorded with Dull, who's a Kensei player, uh, and a frequent poster on the comp sub. Round eight. Uh, it's like 3 a.m. for both of us, so our reactions aren't really on point. But here I have the video at 50% speed, just so I can think about what I'm talking about. Uh, in this matchup, I need to not Dragon Dodge his top heavy unblockable, uh, top heavy mix up, because the side soft feints will catch me out of it. Uh, to open up, I try to close some distance with my forward heavy, which I unfortunately miscalculate how far the distance is, but I end up catching him with an option select on his heavy finisher. Uh, I try to do a dragon dodge out of neutral, which obviously gets punished because it's a shitty move to use offensively, and then I go into a kick, which is just a waste of stamina since there's no wall behind him and doesn't really provide much of a threat. Um, I do get hit by the top chained light out of Kensei there because I was in the middle of a heavy startup which was just a mistake on my part, but I make up for it by baiting him into a guard break with my backwards light which I punish with my 37 damage chained heavy. Um, just a bit of neutral play here with the guard break, I'm looking for an opportunity for a palm strike which I get, but I do not get the follow up light, I accidentally do the heavy but I get the chain light anyways so I made up for a bad read. Uh, here I went for a crush encounter, but I was able to beat the uh, guard break because of it, but I didn't get the crush encounter itself. Dodging on his top heavy unblockable, I was able to block in time on his side heavy soft feint out of that. I was hoping that he was going to go for that in prediction of a dragon dodge, which I was able to avoid, thankfully. Bit of neutral play here with dragon dodgers, which isn't the best decision against the Kensei, but getting him focused on those dodge attacks I was able to slip in another palm strike to finish off this round. Alright, back at the beginning of the second duel that I have prepared, uh, of course it's not going to be a loss because I can't post losses, that would, that would show that I'm not the number one Tandy. Uh, Dull makes an excellent play here by baiting out my forward heavy uh, with his very low recovery uh, for, for dodge attack. Um, I was able to block his heavy finisher mix up thankfully, and a prediction forward heavy was able to catch that guard break, which I was hoping to trade with something, which I finished off with a bit of uh, palm strike pressure. Afterwards, I miss a palm strike into a heavy, into a fainted, into a palm strike, which is a really great mix up because if I miss my initial palm strike and get right back into that mix up, um, after that, I do get a guard break on me, but Dull is out of stamina, so I'm not too worried about that. So I did get a bit of pressure with my follow up lights. Hit that unlock light for 29 damage out of neutral, 
Uh, went for it again. It was a bit too greedy, and Dull was able to bait me on that one. Uh, but he does fuck up that punish, which is good for me. Um, I see he goes for that top heavy, so I prediction do a tiger dodge. Uh, the second time I was hoping he was going for good, predict me doing another tiger dodge, but a dragon dodge got caught by the side soft feint. Uh, random forward heavy has hyper armor, so it's fairly safe to use on neutral. I was able to catch a guard break there. Kick, I don't know why I kicked, I sent myself out of stamina, big mistake on my part. Uh, I blocked the helm splitter, he's going to the top heavy unblockable. I don't want to deal with that, so I just roll away since I know I'm going to get stamina back right then anyways. Uh, Dragon dodge out of neutral, and just to see if he was going to do his own attack from neutral, which it was. Helm splitter has extreme recovery, and I was able to punish with that dragon dodge to seal off the round. Uh, with that narration done... That's going to be the last recording that I have for this Tandy guide for today. Hope everybody enjoyed.